Zen 4 is finally here, and according to AMD, these new Ryzen 7000 series processors are supposed to offer the biggest performance jump that AMD has made since the very first generation of Ryzen CPUs that was about five years ago. Uh, they're supposed to heavily compete with the top tier processors that Intel has to offer, and they're supposed to become uh, the absolute best option you can buy for gaming and for productivity. And those are some pretty big statements. So we did a bunch of benchmarks in the last couple of days, and we tested 20 different games across three different resolutions uh, to see if these claims are actually true. So let's begin. This video is brought to you by Corsair and their brand new Dominator Platinum RGB memory. These super fast DDR5 6000 memory kits are specifically made for AMD and their Ryzen 7000 series CPUs. They feature a stylish aluminum heat spreader with DHX technology that keeps them nice and cool under load, offering a smooth and stable performance with a lot of room for overclocking. And they also come with 12 customizable Capellix LEDs that you can control with their IQ software and easily sync up with your other Corsair components. So check them out using the link in the description down below. For those of you that uh, might have missed all the recent news, uh, today AMD is launching four new processors and if we compare them to the previous generation, the overall core count didn't really change that much. So the Ryzen 5 7600X is still a 6-core 12-thread CPU like the 5600X was. The Ryzen 7 7700X is still an 8-core 16-thread CPU just like the 5700X was. The Ryzen 9 7900X is still a 12-core 24-thread CPU, like the 5900X was, and the 7950X is still a 16-core and 32-thread monster, just like the 5950X was. And all of these cores are created somewhat equal, so there are no efficiency cores, and they're all pretty much performance. They also run at much higher clock speeds than before, and the TDP has gone up, but it is still lower than Intel's alternatives have. A very nice upgrade is that all these new CPUs now have integrated graphics, uh, but the biggest and the most interesting change has to be the new platform. So after five and a half years, AMD has decided to just ditch AM4 socket and move to AM5, which means that if you plan to buy these 7000 series processors, you will need a new AM5 motherboard as well as DDR5 memory. Now the X670 and the X670e motherboard are launching at the same time as these CPUs, but as far as I know, cheaper B650 and B650e alternatives should come out in a couple of weeks as well. Just make sure you don't confuse them with the B660, which is actually an Intel board. Anyway, I have both the Ryzen 9 7900X and the Ryzen 5 7600X here, which I'll cover in my next video, so make sure uh, that you're subscribed to my channel so you don't miss it. And even though the Ryzen 9 box is much larger than the Ryzen 5 one, there is nothing else in there, just a CPU and a lot of foam, uh, which I think is completely pointless. So if you don't plan to add a cooler, there is absolutely no need for a box of this size. As you can see, there are no more pins on the actual CPU. Uh, the new platform has an LGA socket, so the pins are on the motherboard instead. I am mostly going to focus on how this Ryzen 9 compares to the fastest consumer CPU from Intel, the i9-12900K, as well as the fastest AMD CPU from their last generation, which is the Ryzen 9 5950X. And for my Ryzen 9 testing, I use this um, ASRock uh, X670E Tai Chi motherboard that is combined with some uh, Corsair DDR5 6000 memory, and I used an RTX 3090 Supreme X from MSI and a freshly installed Windows. 11 on all three benches. If you want to know the exact specs, I will leave them in the description down below and you can check them out. I did kind of try to make sure that the benches are as comparable as possible. And if we look at the Cinebench R23 result, uh, putting the 12 core 6900X against the 16 core 5950X uh, really shows how much of a jump AMD has made with this new generation. Even with four cores less, uh, this CPU managed to score 16% higher multi-threaded performance than the last gen 5950X and 10% higher than the 16-core i9-12900K. 
And in the Cinebench 20 benchmark, the result is pretty much the same, with the 7900X being 17% ahead of the i9 and 10% ahead of the 5950. In the BMW Blender render test, the 7900X is again in the lead, but the i9 is not that far behind. But the difference between the Ryzen CPUs and the Intel CPUs is that AMD manages to maintain that performance in a longer workload, while the i9 kind of boosts really high at the start, but kind of drops in performance after a while. So if we look at the longer render benchmark, the 7900X is now 22% faster than the i9 and about 9% faster than the 5950X, which is an excellent result. Maximum load power consumption is up from the last generation with the 7900X using 189 watts on average in that longer Blender run, compared to 135 watts for the 5950X while Intel was using even more power while having the lowest result in that benchmark. Single thread performance is up by a massive amount as well, so the 7900X was beating the 5950X by about 23% and the i9 by about 3-4%. to And even though Intel had made a huge performance jump with their 12th gen CPUs, AMD just managed to catch up plus go a bit further. But unfortunately, the raw CPU performance doesn't always directly translate to gaming performance, because there are games that simply prefer Intel, and there are games that simply prefer AMD, and then you have games that are somewhere in between the two. If we look at Spider-Man Remastered, the 7900X looks great on 1080p, outperforming the i9 by a couple of frames, and the 5950X by almost 17%. But on 1440p and 4K resolution, that difference mostly disappears. In the Division 2, the 7900X does win at 1080p, but loses some ground at high resolutions yet again. In God of War, uh, it's actually the other way around, with the 7900X being being a bit slower than the 12900K on 1080p, but actually slightly faster at the 4K resolution. And the same applies to Outriders. The 7900X is a bit slower than the i9 at 1080p, but a bit faster at 4K resolution. In World War Z, the 7900X is just behind the i9 on all resolutions, but these differences are really too small to consider. And the same goes for Assassin's Creed Valhalla, with less than 1% between the two rivals on all resolutions. In Troy Total War, we only see a small gap at the 1080p resolution, and that's pretty much it. And then some games do show a bigger advantage for AMD. So if we look at Far Cry 6, for example, the 7900X uh, beat the i9 by just over 4% at 1080p resolution, even though at 1440p and 4K, there's actually very little difference between them. In Anno 1800, the 7900X is beating the i9 by 5.5% at 1080p resolution, and it is very similar at higher resolutions. In Dying Light 2, AMD takes a near insignificant lead on every resolution, and the same goes for both the Shadow of the Tomb Raider as well as Wolfenstein Youngblood. Uh, both have slight advantages for AMD, but not enough to call them significant. In Cyberpunk 2077, though, the 7900X did make a big jump from the previous generation, but it still lost to Intel by almost 8% on 1080p. Uh, it does catch up nicely at high resolutions, but I would say 8% is still quite significant. In Watch Dogs Legion, the 7900X is 7% behind on 1080p, with smaller gaps at 1440p and 4K, and in both Assassin's Creed Odyssey and control, there's a bit of an advantage for Intel across all three resolutions, and the same can be said for Borderlands 3, although the gap is somewhat small here. Now, Doom Eternal, on the other hand, is interesting because it actually showed a slightly bigger gap at 4K than at 1080p, which is not something you would expect to see. Still, uh, you would probably never really notice a difference between 216 and 223 FPS 
while gaming. It is also not a clear-cut decision if you're into competitive FPS games. Now, in Rainbow Six Siege, the 12900K did slightly better across all resolutions on average, but on 1080p, AMD did have better 1% lows. And on the other hand, the 7900X did better in CSGO by a larger margin at both 1080p and 1440p. So if you compare it to the 5950X, it is obvious that Ryzen made a big jump. Over 8% in 1080p gaming is a generational improvement that AMD should be proud of, and there's a small benefit at high resolutions as well. Now, I am not saying that you should upgrade if you already have a 5000 series CPU, but it is a very good step forward. Uh, on the other hand, it is really hard to summarize the results when you compare it to the i9-12900K because it completely depends on which games you test with. So if we look at the 20 games that I've tested on 1080p, the 7900X was ahead in 8 games and the i9 was ahead in 12 games. But only 6 of those games showed a difference of 4% or more and 3 are on the AMD side and 3 are on Intel side. So on average, there is actually only a half a percent of difference between the two. Now on 4040p, it is about the same. It is a draw in two games. AMD wins six, Intel wins 12, but only three of those titles show a gap of 3% of more. And keep in mind, 3% is not something that you will really notice while gaming. And even though on 4K resolution, you're really and usually GPU bound, uh, the CPU choice did make a tiny bit of a difference in some games. Still, none of these games showed more than 4% one way or the other, and most just showed 2% or less. So once again, I don't think it really matters. So after those raw CPU benchmarks, I kind of expected a bigger win for AMD here, while in reality, it ended up being very close to Intel. And before you start just commenting how other reviewers got different percentages in their reviews, there is actually a few things to keep in mind here. So first of all, percentages don't paint the complete picture as they will 100% depend on which games you're testing. So if the majority of the titles you test with prefers AMD, the gap will be larger in AMD's favor, and then vice versa. Secondly, I tested games with an NVIDIA GPU, while AMD's marketing numbers were based on an AMD GPU, which in theory should benefit from AMD's SAM feature. Uh, funnily enough, they actually used an NVIDIA GPU for their own CPU benchmarks. Anyways, I chose an NVIDIA GPU because they kind of still dominate the high-end GPU market, and this is a very, very high-end CPU. I still plan on making another SAM dedicated video when the new GPUs come out and then see how much of a difference will SAM actually make. For these Ryzen 7000 series processors specifically, uh, we'll need to see if the new motherboard prices will end up being competitive or not. You cannot just look at the CPU MSRP and make your decision. So a 7900X is a $550 CPU, while you will have to spend $570 for an i9. So it's more or less the same. But if the new AMD motherboards end up costing a lot more, that might sway some people to the other side. Also, while AMD is only compatible with DDR5 memory, Intel still gives you an option to save a bit of money with DDR4 kits, although I think that's more of an issue uh, for the cheaper Ryzen 5 here, and I'll cover that more extensively in my uh, next review. So, in the end, I think that both Intel and AMD have an excellent, very competitive product. I know it's not the most popular opinion to praise both, but I think it is well deserved here. In multi-core performance, Intel was chasing behind Ryzen for years, and last year they finally made a huge leap with their 12th gen CPUs and managed to take the crown. And similarly, AMD just made a huge leap with these Zen 4 processors and uh, instantly closed the gap in terms of gaming performance and also overtook Intel once again when it comes to productivity and then by a lot. And people will always have their preferences and they can always pick out things that will justify their choice, uh, whether it's productivity, whether it's a specific game choice or simply uh, blue versus red color. But either way, both brands are miles ahead than they were a year ago, and that is exactly what happens when you have such giants competing on the market and just pushing each other to do better and better with each and every product. We all 
benefit here. And that is exactly why we are all waiting to see what's going to happen in the next few weeks, because Intel is expected to launch their 13th gen CPUs, and both Nvidia and AMD are expected to launch a bunch of new graphics cards. So if you don't need to buy a PC right now, this week, I do recommend that you sit tight and wait a little bit longer to see how all these big launches will play out. Now, that is it for today. Thank you all for watching. And if you like this video, don't forget to click that subscribe button because I will be covering a lot of new things in the next few days. Bye guys and see you in the next one.